So guys, real, uh, real simple. Let's start off with the basics. Um, hitting, all right? One of the most important things is your grip, okay? So you'll see a lot of your guys, they grip the bat super tight, right their arms are up like this, their elbows are up. Not athletic. The second you tell them to point their pointer fingers towards the sky, they're a little bit more relaxed. Their whole body doesn't really tense up as much. If I'm, uh, I'm using, I'll use this, this bat here. Never mind, I'll use this one. Okay? Take my bat, just about a little bit further than shoulder width apart, I'm nice and athletic. Kind of like our fielding position. A little bit further than my bat, a little bit further than shoulder width apart, I'm nice and athletic here. And then same thing when I'm talking about having plate coverage. Okay, I'm going to take my bat to right about there. So. I'm in Little League and I'm six, seven, eight. I'm getting up on the plate, shoulder width apart. Make sure that my grip isn't like this. I'm going to take my fingers all the way up towards the sky. I'm going to rest it on my back shoulder nice and easy. Once I get there, I can lift it up off my back shoulder, kind of like back behind my ear, right behind my right ear. I'm nice and athletic right here, and that's a good stance. If you guys want to get to that position, hold, hold your bottom thumb. So if you're a right handed hitter, everybody stand up and spread out. Let's do this now. Let's do this. Let's take our. Our right hand, if you're a righty, lefties, it's just the opposite. Right hand and hold your left thumb, that's your bat. Let's get a little bit further and shoulder width apart. Nice and athletic, a little bend in your knees, nice and loose. Take your pointers, point them towards the sky. Good, I'm athletic here, right? I'm, I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable, and I'm gonna rest it just on my back shoulder. Now pick it up right in here. We don't want our bat straight up because I can't feel the weight at all, it's super light. We don't want it all the way flat, because now I feel all the way, think more 45 degree angle, right here in the middle. Nice and relaxed, this is a good athletic stance. Some guys are open, some guys are closed. It gets, once you get a little bit older, it's more comfort than anything, okay? But that is super easy, basic stance to teach your first time hitters how to stand in the box. Feet should be a little bit further than their back. Your front toe should be able to touch the bat and cover the, the far edge of home plate. And get that nice, relaxed stance. Fingers almost towards the sky. It doesn't have to be straight up, but somewhere in this area. All right. Next part is the load, which at this age probably more important than the swing. The load what I teach is I pretend there's a rubber band from the from the knob of my bat to my front foot. Okay. So once I get to that stance, my load is what I do when the pitcher is getting ready to throw it towards me. That pitcher is going through his windup, getting ready to throw to home plate. I want to take that rubber band and I want to stretch it out. Fr rubber band from here to my front foot. I want to stretch that rubber band out this way. Notice I'm taking a little step towards the pitcher, and I'm taking this knob towards the catcher's face mask. Guys like to do this. Right? They reach way back like this. I'm not athletic here, and I'm not strong. Easiest way to teach it, when their front foot hits the ground, the knob should be at the catcher's face mask. So you'll have guys that have leg kicks. You'll have guys that start open. You'll have guys that start close together. I don't care how they get there. But when their front foot hits the ground, that knob should be at the catcher's face mask. That means there, you'll hear terms like separation, or you'll hear terms like get your hands back. That's all that is, right? All that is is that rubber band, or picture somebody shooting a ball and arrow, straight back before they go forward. When I hit, I need to go back before I go towards the ball. Especially at the younger age, they start seeing live pitching, and this is what they do. They get in the box, they're standing here, they're nervous, and they do this. <laughs> they step towards the ball and their hands are here. They're not ready to hit. If you have six or seven year olds and they haven't hit before, Make this a station of practice. Grab their bats, put their helmets on, put them on a straight line right here. Right foot on the line, they get to their stance, separate and freeze. Separate and freeze. A lot of guys will be jumpy, they'll be nervous, they get rushed. Tell them to pick their favorite big league hitter. Pull out a video of them. It's slow, it's, it's controlled. So the one thing I use is your cadence or your rhythm should always be the same. If you're facing a guy that throws super hard, or you're facing a guy that that stinks and he's throwing rainbows, your load should always be that same. One, two, three, and I'm ready to hit. One, two, three, and I'm ready to hit. Not, oh, this guy throws really hard, so I'm gonna back up and go, what's three, right? You're not repeating the same load. If you wanna teach a kid to take consistent swings, make sure he gets his, the, the same consistent load every single time. Now, if I get here, I'm able to repeat the same swing. But if sometimes I get rushed and I do this, or I do this, or I jump, now my mechanics are going to break down every swing. So the load's important. Good question. So, Rich, going back to your hands, your knuckles, mm -hmm. you're just swinging just now. Didn't you sort of switch them to the box? Didn't Sorry? You didn't you just box your hand? You switched hit? your knuckles, right? Or no? No, maybe a little bit crossed. Little bit? You don't see too many guys like this, straight up. Like I do that for the little guys just to eliminate this. Yeah. 
they're going to be crossed a little bit, right? I feel I feel way stronger right here than I do like that, okay. right? But this is just really to eliminate that. If you want to stay away from the big knuckles, more kids are going to think this is strong, so the big knuckles line up. That's what we're. Yeah. That's ultimately what we're trying to stay away from. You guys at golf, you know what a swing is. The importance of this swing. You can't swing a golf club like this because they're fighting against each other. So that's kind of the yeah. thing. I would say yes. So let's so let's say somewhere from here to here. If they're like this. That's okay. But this is what you really really want to stay away from. Any other questions on the load or the stance? Okay, let's talk basic, basic mechanics. All right, if Duke's my pitcher and I'm getting ready to hit, once I start my swing and I start my load and my front foot hits the ground, what's going to generate the power is your lower half and your core. Okay, this is going to generate my power. So a lot of guys you'll see, they'll take, swing, they'll take swings and their back foot doesn't turn at all. Right? Yeah? One question on that. Because I have that with my own son. When he goes here, he when the shoulder and so is any mechanic good to, because when they, I know when they bring the shoulder, literally the, the ball is behind them. Yes. Then they come here, they waste time when pitcher throw hard. Yeah, so you can, you can have them hold his bat like this on the shoulders. Tell them to start just like this. Okay. Bat on the shoulders. So when they get loaded, that bat should somewhat still be towards, towards the pitcher. Right, it's a little bit tilted down, but you don't ever want this to happen, because when they over-rotate back, that means the only way they're coming back is to over-rotate coming forward. Yep. And it turns into a big merry-go-round going this way. Right? So I always teach, flip this or take a piece of PVC pipe or a bat and just have them stand next to that. Freeze. This is pretty strong. This. Now, if I close my left eye, I can't even see the picture because my nose is blocking it. That's a huge one, guys. That's what we just said on that. If you close your left eye, you wouldn't be able to see the picture. I can't even see the picture. You're only going to see over there. You should be able to see the shortstop still. When you're done, I should still be able to see the shortstop with my right eye. That's what that means everything. So I can still torque and turn as long as my head's not. Once my head goes, that's a long to your point. Yeah, so really knob back, right? Get that knob back. You'll feel more of like a like a back shoulder almost pinching this way instead of an over rotation. Okay? But get back. After we get loaded, right, our front foot hits the ground, I get to that good launch position. What's gonna start my swing? I always teach right knee. I always say, drive my right knee down this way. Right? That's gonna start my swing. Right knee, and then I'm getting connected back in here. All I mean by connected is my right elbow is getting to my hip, and now I'm strong this way to the ball, as opposed to maybe I'll just turn my hips and stand up tall. I'm not strong like this. Yes, I'm squishing the bug or I'm turning my back foot, but it doesn't look like I'm really generating any power. So I always teach get that right knee down, get connected, which means my right elbow is around my hip, and now I'm taking this top hand or this barrel right to the ball this way, right, instead of standing up tall, not turning my back foot, getting out and around it. A good drill to do, put the tee on home plate and have them do a rewind drill. All I mean by that, put the ball right in front of home plate, start at contact. At contact, my back foot's turning, my knee's down, elbow's on my hip almost, and I'm here. This is strong. Now I'm going to rewind, boom, and then hit the ball to the it's a good one. It just shows them where they want to be at contact. Sometimes kids will put the tee on home plate right there and just start swinging. Going around, I never want to hit the ball back this far. You know what I mean? If you want to talk about, uh, I mean, real quick, I don't want to get too complicated, but points of contact, where you want to make contact with the pitch, I get to home plate, this is where I set up. When I step and freeze, wherever my front foot lands, that's a good, a good spot to hit the pitch right down the middle. So I put a ball right there. Right down the middle, right about where my front foot lands. Front knee shows me where I want to hit that ball on the outside for. Wherever my front knee is, that's outside. And now there's a, an imaginary line here that works across home plate. And that's where I want to make contact. So you'll notice I step, I'm in line with that middle pitch. If I hit the outside pitch, my elbow's in, my knee's down. As I work across home plate, my elbow's in, my knee's down. Elbow's in, knee's down. Elbow's in, knee's down. You don't see me reaching for that ball. A ton of rollovers, right? Six, six all the way through 12. Almost every out is a rollover on the ground towards third or shortstop. That's because they're trying to make contact with that pitch out here. I can't. It's a rollover. I'm working this way instead of making sure I, maybe I set up that T correctly. If I'm working on that pitch, I set it up on my front knee. Balance is a huge issue, right? Guys are falling off balance. Make that a station of practice. Tell them to take a full swing. And hold that pose, one hand versus two hands. We don't try to cookie cut. The kid's comfortable finishing with one, and he's still able to control his barrel. Go ahead, right? But a lot of younger guys, I teach two hand finishes, just because their right hand's gonna be their dominant hand, right hand. 
for the most part. Most lefties throw lefties, so they're left hand dominant. So you see, you see a lefty sometimes go hit, and they take that top hand off the bat, it's lazy. Right, this barrel's kind of dragging through the zone. But if I force them to finish with two hands, they're strong with this top hand all the way through. That way. Or what are some other issues you guys run into? Hitting or questions? Asking many things. Like, I, I try to teach my daughter hitting with all those ideas. I think like one or two main points that we really hold in on. Because I found her you know, explaining all this and that. So to avoid confusion, what, what should we focus on? To keep it over, overly simple. Focus on the load. Focus on driving that lower half. So whether you say right knee or you say turn the hip, this is an important part. If you don't get this turn, a lot of times it's going to cast. Dr. Gina, I think that was your question, right? Casting. If I don't turn my lower half, right, and I start to swing, everything's out of the way from my body. I'm doing this. But if I can turn my lower half, like everybody gets that position for me. Hold your thumb again. Get that knob to the catcher and freeze. Knob back towards the catcher. Now leave your hands there. Don't move. Just start turning from the waist down. Leave your hands back. Leave your hands back. You'll start to feel it pulling in here. Right? That's all that separation or torque. Or torque. That's where your power is going to come from. So if you turn that lower half, I feel that stretch in here. That, I'm getting some whip from there now. That's, that's where I'm strong. These are my, my bigger muscles, not up here. Right? So right knee or, or hips, drive it forward. And then I would say, I would say get connected. I would really say get connected, getting your right elbow to your hip. Um, other issues. Yeah. My daughter has a bad tendency when she swings. She tends to do this. Her head, for whatever reason, she thinks she sees the ball better this way than versus staying right here and watching the ball come straight. But for some reason, I can't get her, nine times out of ten, get her in the habit of not doing this. Her head turns uh, sideways. I had a kid do the same thing, and I put a glove on top of his head. I just did this. Right, so he was hitting, and I told him he had to keep a glove on top of his head. It sounds funny, but every time he was doing this, it was falling off. And it gets frustrating once you pick it up 50 times in a row, so they, then they start to take swings, and they get here, and they go. And then all of a sudden, they're going to stay balanced. Something as simple as that. Other questions? Other, that yeah. cast and a good drill to eliminate. Yeah, so you, can have them, uh, you can have them do a T-drill up against the net. So, so Robinson can know it's his favorite drill. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to hit this ball, but right here, that ball's right there. i got to try to get to that pitch without hitting that net. Right, so I get loaded back. Take batting practice like that. Take the big else. You take the big screen and put it right on the pitcher, right at the whole plate. And the pitcher would throw him inside. And he would just, he'd have to turn and just, and just be pressure balls. And would keep himself from getting out here. Just, same as that drill with doing BP with it. So, yeah. So you you can do a off center front toss, which means if I'm standing on home plate like this, front toss from there. Right? It comes to the inside the ball. If they get out and around it, they're just going to keep hitting into the ground this way. If you're in a cage, right, we always try to hit the back net on the cage. That's our goal, usually. You can have them stand off center. So if this is my batting cage, and Dan's my pitcher, stand off center. Put a line, right, put this on the grass. And now i got to use this. And I'm trying to hit the ball right back to the middle. That's my target. And that's going to help me stay inside the ball and hit it. That way, eliminate casting. And every time they cast, they're going to beat you right into the ground. So what, what did you say in the beginning about talking? So the question for you is, you know, with your daughter, what's the drill? It's more of the drills that you can do with her and you not talking. So Steve putting the, the, the hat or the mitt on his head, he doesn't have to say you're tilting your head. But the, and now it's almost like it's, they all of a sudden will self-correct themselves. So it's getting the drill that's going to get them connected. So there was a girl that, was, that we were working on that, when, you know, like Steve was talking about when you step forward about making sure that your hands are going back. So I just took a dodgeball, threw it on her shoulder, put her hands like this, and said, well, when I step forward, I bring my hands back. Well, if I have a bat in my hand, this is the same exact position. She can do this 25 times and doesn't have to worry about the bat, the ball, the, I'm not pitching to her. She's just going like this, and she's feeling that same exact position. And now when I hit, it's the same, it's like all the motions are the same. So now they're, they're not thinking, oh, is my feet right or minded? No, it's just, boom. Or, you know, or what Steve was saying about with the, with the legs and kind of turning, you can have them just do the drill to where they're holding something and just really working on this position, and you're holding their hands. So they're getting the, the mechanic is getting drilled in without worrying, oh, you beat the ball into the ground, oh, you popped up. Because now they're, they're result driven. If they hit three ground balls and they do it right, they're going to be like, oh, damn, that was still bad. Well, no, your form was good. You know, if you miss it a ball by a, by a millimeter, it's a ground ball. So you can take a great swing and miss it the ball by this much and 
it's a pop fly. That doesn't mean the swing was bad. That just means that you got under the ball this much. Like, this game is so hard, so the more you can kind of design and have them feel the movements, now when they do have a bat, it's like, okay, now you've already created the swing that you want. Now they're just swinging and doing all the movements that you were doing with the bat in their hand. Because that's, but if you're just sitting there firing stuff out while they have a bat in their hand, make sure you do this, make sure you do that, make sure. Now they're like, oh. okay, what am I supposed to do? I found myself doing that when I first started yeah. coaching. When I finished playing and I first started coaching, I was trying to correct everything at once. You're better off spending one day and focusing on one thing. Worry about the rest of the team. So if she's struggling to get to that launch position, only work on the load. I don't care if she swings and misses or pops up 20 times in a row. If she's getting loaded on time, great job. You're on time. You're on time. Now once she does that, then you can move on to the next one. What else? Uh, That's the hardest thing. We, we, we actually work on drills like that. We'll actually work on drills where I'm taking balls and we'll say, okay, guys, we're going to work on not getting hit by the ball today, but how do you get out of the way of the ball? Because they're afraid that they're going to get hit or that they don't know how to get out of the way. If they open up their front foot and they take one in the gut, it's going to hurt way more than, but they don't know that. They, they don't even care about that. They're just thinking safety and work. So we're going to teach them how to do it properly. So he's going to, so Steve's in this position. He's going to turn and, and talk about it. He's going to come in and he's just going to, turn to the catcher. So they know, okay, on these balls, they're going to kind of turn. So with the little kids, you're just going to use wiffle balls. And then say, okay, by you standing there, now if I toss a ball behind you, you're going to be able to get out of the way because you're, you're not thinking my first move is step out and get out. You're thinking, okay, I know how to get out of the way of the ball now. I know if I turn in and, you know, if it is coming to me, I can get out of the way quicker. So it's almost like getting to understand that building confidence that, and now every once in a while, put a softy ball or a whipple ball in your bucket. So when you're pitching to them, throw one at them. And watch them get out of the way. Like, see, you can get out of the Now you're building confidence again. Now they're like, oh, I can get out of the way. Because until you do that, they don't care about a line drive. They don't care about a hit. I just don't want to get hit by the baseball. So that overrides any success that they're even thinking about. You know, because that's pretty scarring at seven, right? I mean, that ball hurts like hell if you hit the wrong spot. Right? So, but if you can get them comfortable with understanding it, it helps. Any questions about anything else? So, not only just not only the hitting part, the fielding stuff. The, you know, I know we were done it too, but we knew we were going to extend it longer because. Great question. Yes. Before you guys leave, we have a practice. We have a plan. You're gonna have it's gonna be a. It says seven to eight. This is a perfect practice. It's gonna have the warm up with some drills on it. Break up into three stations. Hitting, feeling with the drills actually in it that you guys can follow from what we did. And then always spend 10 minutes on a skill set. Like that would be the tagging or tagging up or a certain game situation. But you always wanna hit, field, and throw every day. You know that in an always base running. More games are lost base running, but no one ever works on base running. Tagging up, sliding, touching the bases. You know, a coach kind of bringing the guy. How many times have you been in a big game? You're the third base coach, the runner's on second, and you're going like this, and he's not even looking at you. Right? They're like, because we never work on it in practice. So we have we have that exact plan. So when you guys leave, we have we have all kinds of we have all kind of handouts. We have a $99 special that you can bring your team in, and we will actually coach you for an hour. We do a half hour on the field and a half hour in two days, and it's 99 bucks. Like that's a, like, like a one-time thing that we have with you guys. There's an, and we have like this video series that you can look at. You'll see when you go in there, there's there's a lot of things that you guys will get. We have an exclusive Facebook page that you can just sign up and ask questions, ask for drills. We'll pop drills on there. So if there's like 68 people, it's like a small community of the people from last year's coaches clinic. And then you guys would just sign up on it and then just, and we're just talking back and forth about how we can help you guys. And you Duke, know. And I, Duke and I created a website called dominatethediamond.com that you guys can go on and check out. Um, there's a, like a sneak peek package, it's, nine, it's 10 bucks, 9.99, where it shows you, I think it's 10 videos, 10 videos of us running drills with the team, pitching, catching, uh, 
outfield play, hitting, situational play. And then there's different packages you can get. But because you guys are here, there's a 50% off, uh, one time 50% off it's coaches, coaches Clinic 2018 coupon that you can use, where we have 116 videos in there. If you guys are interested, there's, there's a, uh, three different packages. The one is the majors package, it includes 116 videos, 15 practice plans, pretty much anything and everything you could imagine if you guys need that or that's something you'd be interested in. Um, but to answer your question about the formulating your practice, another great way to do it, 15 minutes at the end, do coach pitch scrimmage. Set your guys up on the field. I do it all the time. I coach the, uh, the 12U team in the spring, and we do that a ton, and we stop. So, so we'll stop the game. Kid will hit a ball in the gap. Somebody will do something wrong. I'll call them all in and say, okay, guys, in that situation, he's going to get that ball. You need to be moving here. I need to be moving here. You need to be hustling out of the box. This way, it is a game, but it's also your hands-on. It's way easier to control than you know, being out on the field playing against another team. I feel like my son, like, uh, when he's hitting, he hits off like, the back. It's the same drill. What do you to do to be able to like, power through? Power through. Uh, we do a step-back drill, which uh, you can have them start with both feet together. Take a big step back, and then swing. He feels like getting to his back leg, and then almost back off. Right, because a lot of guys, they'll just start back here. They'll yeah, just turn like that. Yeah, so you can have him, you can, you can have him hop, too. You can have him get to a stance, hop forward, hop back, then full swing. That's a good one. We have so many drills. Just ask any question. Like, you guys saw the, the tag me drill. I made that up in two seconds. Like, just to show you that you guys something to do together. Like, you guys just, that's the coolest part about coaching. Is there's no rules. There's no rules to to what you're showing or what you're doing. Asking for drills or you know come, creating something new, or trying something different. Just just have fun with it. So they're having fun. They're gonna love coming. You know, just make sure they know your name. You don't want to have a great year and be like, man, I don't even know who my coach was this year. But I hate you didn't do too good of a job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but hope, hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys had fun. And we're having another one, another free play next week. It's 45 minutes. Hitting stations and hitting. And then it's all pitching. So there won't be you know, the feeling of stuff, but so if you guys want to come back next week, there'll be different stuff and it's another, you know, 12 32, same exact thing, but if it's focusing on hitting and pitching. They also stuff for that. For the exclusive Facebook, if you guys ever have a question about a drill or you know, my team's struggling with this, shoot on there and ask. And then we'll, we'll respond right away. Or stop by and ask. We'd be more than happy to help you guys out.